Hey guys, Greg here. Vinyl Rundown, a wonderful uh, thread just developed by Rob Walker over in Manchester, England. And I've seen videos by Mazzy and I've seen vid and a, a video by um, Shannon, is that your name? <laughs> um, great challenge here. It's not the battle of the bands, but it's the great matchups of the world. Bands, who's better, A or B? The obvious one, Beatles versus Stones, which I'm not going to do, but I'm going to look at bands that kind of should be matched together because they were kind of leaders in their field, leaders in their genre, maybe, or they just had some similarity, similarities where people compared them a lot. So let's get it started. I'm going to use bands that the other people didn't cover really too much. What about the two masters of funk? Parliament Funkadelic, Sly and the Family Stone. This is One Nation Under a Groove. What a great cover. Look at the artwork on this thing. Amazing. You could spend an hour just going over all these little bits of what, what the... Oops. Don't look at that. Look at everything else. Uh, One Nation Under a Groove, Groove Allegiance. Who says funk band can't play boogie? Pro mental shit back, wash psychosis, enema squad, the doo doo chasers. I mean, how can you compete with that? Sly and the Family Stone. And what's, what tunes are on here? I don't even know. Stand. Uh, everyday people, sex machine. You can make it if you try. This is a tough one. Overall, a lot of people would probably go with this, but for the music that I've listened to and grooved to, I'm going to give a slight edge. Sly to edge to Sly. Sylvester. Sly and the Family Stone. Okay, who else do we got here? Let's crank up, let's crank up the volume a little here. And if I make this face, ah, UFO and the Scorpions. Two great hard rockin' bands, both with a Shanker in them. Michael Shanker, guitar for UFO. Rudy Shanker, guitar for the Scorps. And this band didn't really do that much in the United States, but this is this is a band that I grew up with and played a lot of songs on guitar. My choice is for UFO. But two uh, rockin' bands. Great, one of the great live albums of its decade. UFO, Strangers in the Night. And the great German artist, what's his name? Hans von Schwarzenhoeven, what's his name? Does these great, uh, scary paintings. Okay. What kind of a theme do we have here? Okay. Richie Havens and Taj Mahal. Two great soulful singers, usually singing with just a guitar. Richie Havens... One of the, was he the headliner at Woodstock? No, not the headliner. He was the opening act at Woodstock, I think. And Taj Mahal, the blues man. I just always kind of associate them together, even though they have nothing to do with each other. But Richie Havens and his great, smooth, silky voice. Love Richie Havens. That's my choice. But whatever. Oh, I'm missing a record here, guys. Can you hold on for... How long are you going to have to hold on? Don't move. Two seconds. Sing. Sing something. Don't move. La, 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 la. I wasn't so bad, guys. I was only gone a second. Five seconds, ten seconds. Okay. Okay. Who are these two guys? Let's start from the back. See if you recognize them. Well, that doesn't... That, that's not fair. Let's go to the front now. Bill Withers, Al Green. Bill Withers just died in the last year or so, Al Green. I'm still in love with you, love and happiness. How, how can you beat those tunes? Those are so soulful. Those are songs for getting down to. Bill Withers, Still Bill, his second record. What tunes are on here? Lean On Me. Bill Withers, amazing. My personal favorite, this is a really tough call, slight edge to Bill Withers, but both fantastic artists, all right? My choice. They're both awesome. Okay, this one is controversial because you Blue Note freaks on the, uh, 
on the VC, the vinyl community, are going to not understand what's going on here. The two great guitar players of their day. Uh, Grand Green just got this on Tone Poet recently. Took that off the store. And Wes Montgomery. This is Wes Montgomery on Verve. And he did Wes Montgomery record for lots of different labels. But uh, overall, Wes Montgomery is the more influential uh, guitar player. And uh, even though Wes Montgomery made some more commercial stuff later on in his career, um, my vote is for a slight vote, a slight edge for Wes Montgomery. Maybe not slight. Love Grant Green and the sound of his work and the consistency on Blue Note. More consistent than Wes Montgomery, but they're both mega guitar players. I'm a guitar player, so I love guitar players. And these are both great albums in the sort of annals, annals, what's the word? Annals of jazz, <laughs> excuse me. This record is highly respected. It's, it's on a lot of top 20 lists. Winton Kelly, Smoking at the Half Note. It is a gatefold. This is a re-release. And I think half of this is live and half of this is studio. Rudy Van Gelder, Winton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb, who just died. Both tremendous records. My slight edge overall as an artist is Wes Montgomery. Okay, let's let our hair down a little bit, guys. Are you ready to let your hair down? Let some of that hair down. Let's see what kind of hair you're rocking. Are you rocking with Dokken and Rat? Rat has made this sudden resurgence because of the Geico commercial. Hey, we got rats in it. Was like, we got a rat problem, and then Rat is in their living room. We're round and round. Uh... Dockin' Rat. Can you guys make a decision? It's too tough of a decision. They're both one-hit wonders. I really only know one or two songs from each band. But my slight edge goes to Dockin' because of the extremely heavy shredding guitar work of George Lynch. George Lynch, as you know, left Dockin', started his own band. I wonder how they're doing now. I wonder how their booking is... Uh, their booking schedule is going because his band is, of course, George Lynch and the Lynch Mob. He might have to uh, walk that back a few steps. This one I should have showed at the beginning because this one is so obvious in my day. Joe Jackson and Elvis Costello were always being compared. Joe Jackson, the classic Blue Note Sonny Rollins cover. Blue Note design through and through. And Elvis Costello. Back in the day when these two records came out, I was a bigger fan of Joe Jackson. But Elvis Costello stuck it out with a longer career. More great tunes. What's on here? Uh, do I even know any of these tunes? You know Elvis. How did uh, Massey just refer to him as uh, Shannis McNamus or something? Declan. Declan McManus. Yeah, I've seen him twice. I've seen him once. And they both have a cool, jazzy undertone. Joe Jackson, very blatantly jazz on here. This guy went and married Diane Krall. Diana Krall. That's how jazzy he is. Okay, let's take it back. Let's take it south of the border. Okay, two records that always probably were compared in their day. What is the most delightful thing you can smear all over your body? Whipped cream, isn't it? Herb Albert, whipped cream, and other delights with a Tijuana breast. Tijuana. Well, we say Tijuana, but it's Tijuana. And Sergio Mendes and the Brazil 66. Herb Albert, a Jewish guy, I guess from New York, pretending to be Mexican. Not Mexican at all. There he is. One of the wealthiest men in show business. And Sergio Mendes. I'm going to give a slight edge to Sergio Mendes for their own records. Herb Albert is a greater stature in the music history because he started a massive record label and made nearly a billion dollars. But Sergio Mendez, Mas Que Nada, all these great uh, Little Help With My Friends is on here. The Look of Love, Burt Bacharach. Um, I give a slight edge. This is a good chill and record, really. All right, guys. Wow, this is going to get weird. Real fast, real soon. Please hang on. Hang on. Am I missing another record here? 
I don't want to have to run out if you're looking for another record. Oh my god. Don't move, guys. Where's that record? There may be another slight... Um, oh, there it is. Okay. It's very complicated. I've got this whole sequence here for you guys. Okay. Do you like guys running around in crazy outfits? If so, you should love the Dickies and the Tubes. Dickies. Dawn of the Dickies. The Dickies is a punk comedy satire insanely bizarre band but with a punk sound the tubes a little more cerebral a little more uh, what's the word here they're making a little more of a statement about society you know remote control we're all being raised by our television we're living on remote control the excesses and phoniness of Hollywood they've got uh, fee way bill singing and restyles female in the band. What tunes are on here? Turn Me On, TV Is King, Give Me Your Prime Time. A whole kind of a thing about how TV has taken over our lives. The Dickies, they're just ridiculously funny. Look at the tunes. Well, they do a great version of Nights in White Satin, Stuck in a Pagoda with Trisha Toyota. How's the light in here, guys? Is, it, is this thing too bright? I'm in a lot of, uh, what's the word on there? Too light. Maybe darken it a notch for you, viewers at home. Manny Moe and Jack, I'm a Cholo, Attack of the Mole Men. This is a tough one. I'm not sure I can decide. I might give a slight edge to the Dickies because they, their records are consistently bizarre. The tube's got a little commercial at the end. Where's White Punks on Dope? I couldn't find that. I wanted to show White Punks on Dope, which is a classic. A classic um, anthem of my generation. We are all white punks on dope. Okay. That wasn't weird enough, guys, was it? Because who's next? Do you, you have any idea who's going to top this off? Because we're going to go black. How black are we going to go? Is it possible to go any blacker? None more black than Spinal Tip. The greatest rockumentary band of all time? Maybe, maybe not. What about the Ruddles? The Ruddles. What tunes, what albums are on here? Meet the Ruddles, Tragical History Tour, Let It Rot. A legend that will live a lifetime long after other living legends have died. The semi-legendary group who made the 60s what they are today. The Prefab Four. Dirk, Nasty Stig, and Barry Womba. I actually like this movie better. One of the funniest movies of all time. One of the most quoted comedies of all time. But musically, I might have to give it to the Ruddles, but they, they, had the, uh, they had the Beatles to sort of ride their coattails, and they ended up having to split some royalty checks with the Beatles. So, musically, slight edge to the Ruddles. It's a more listenable, listenable album than this. Without the live show, without the uh, dwarfs on stage and the pods and the explosions and vomiting, a more listenable band for sure. Okay guys, we're coming on to a grand finale that is one of the grandest of all time. Okay, get ready. You put your conceptual mind on. Think broadly, okay? In this hand, I have... Let's use some contrast. In this hand, I have all recorded music of the 20th century. It's a global, mega-universal sphere. All music of the 20th century against Miles Davis. This does not contain any Miles Davis. This is all music but Miles Davis, and this is Miles Davis. So, which one would you give... Which one would you give more weight to. Which one would you prefer? I'll give you a hint. One of these contains some Nickelback and one of them doesn't. One of them contains some Hanson and the other one doesn't. The winner is Miles Davis, hands down. My opinion, the greatest artist of the 20th century. Now, 
There's a lot of good people on here too, guys. There's plenty of good people on here. But for my money, I'll say this is the most important and influential musical artist of the 20th century. How do we beat that, Greg? Are you going to have an ending that beats that? Yeah. I'm going one step up. Kicking it up to 11, if you will. Greatest of all time. Who is the greatest of all time? Who are the two greatest of all time? Well, I'm going to show you two... Horribly ugly people. This guy. This ugly, mean, SOB, unhappy, dyspeptic, sued everyone in his family. I think he drank a lot. And this other guy who was much happier. This guy was a much happier guy. He had like 20 kids. Composed their butts off. That's right. Ludwig versus Johann, the two greatest of all time. Ludwig von Beethoven, Johann Sebastian Bach. The two greatest of all time. I mean, period. Don't even leave any uh, disagreements in the, in, the, in the comments down there. It's not worth arguing. They are the two greatest of all time. My slight preference is to Ludwig von Beethoven, a man who composed all of his great works while he was deaf. And uh, they both had very interesting lives. And the VC needs to talk more about these great guys. Guys, I think that's it. Thank you, Rob Walker. And it was Mazzy and Shannon who actually s turned me on to what Rob was up to. Great idea for a thread. Uh... I would like to see your comparisons, guys. Get in on this thread. It's a very clever idea. And, uh, you know, if you saw my last video, I'm now using Vinyl Rundown on Twitter. On, what's the other one called? Instagram. Even TikTok. I don't know what to do with TikTok, but follow me on all those platforms, please. If you want to, why not? Thank you, Rob, especially. And that's the Battle of the Bands. Final rundown style. Check you guys later. Bye-bye.